Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be showcasing a Sword and Shield Greatsword build. You guys have seen a lot of these recently, but I want to showcase how strong this build really is. So of course, I have to pull it out. Fire Staff Ice Gauntlet is something that I've always played, and the only piece I'm keeping from that previous build is the Champion's Ring, which is best in slot for almost every build right now, then the Champion's Earring, which I don't really use on my Mage build, but I did have it in the stash, and then of course the Grasping Futility is something that I do use on my current Mage build. However, all of these other pieces I haven't really used yet. I'll, however, I, I did make a kind of a role here for myself and this video is that I have to use pieces that are very easily gettable for everybody watching. So if you guys want to get these pieces, they are very easily obtainable. They're free pieces that you can actually get, like I said, from that PvP track. I've completed 93 tracks and I've gotten almost every single piece at this point. So you can mix and match these pieces and make sure you're at a medium, light, or heavy build depending on what you want to be at. But realistically, guys, a lot of the stuff that I am using today is very, very easy to get. The only thing that is not from a PvP track is going to be the amulet. And that's because after 93 tracks, I've still not gotten the Champion's Amulet. So here we are running just a, a basic Divine Health and Shirking Debilitate Cleanse. Divine specifically because we are running Shirking Heals on every piece, and I really want to stack that Health Regen. So another thing we see here on the right, we are running the Sword of the Champion, which is a sword that comes out of the PvP track, and then the Bone Wrecker, which I don't know if there is a great sword in the PvP track. I'm assuming there is at this point, but who knows. So I'm running the Bone Wrecker. This is just something I randomly grabbed. It's not that good at all because it has thwarting strikes, and I'm not going 300 strength with this build because I want to mix and match pieces of gear very, very quickly. I'm just going to ignore the thwarting strikes. Mortal Fortifications, not a very big deal either. Slowing Rupture is probably the only piece that's actually, or sorry, the only perk that's actually useful on the Bone Wrecker, which is funny because typically this is a decent piece, but... Like I said, we are going to just be here pretty much to test things out and showcasing how easy this build is and how strong it really is without even having the best in slot pieces. So the other thing that I had to buy, of course, is the round shield 594 gear score. Why not? Let's get right into it. So let's jump into the 3v3 arena and just showcase how strong this build is. While we do that, I do want to also go to my attributes. This is what I'm running. It's not a lot of anything. 57 strength ain't going to do much for you guys. I'm not going to lie to you. 200 dexterity, not going to do a lot for you. Not going to lie to you. But we are going to have 210 constitution. We're going to add 40 con to that, and we're going to get that 250 minus 60% damage reduction when full health. This is a 60 second cooldown. However, it's going to activate probably two to three times in each arena because I'm going to be very, very hard to kill with all these shirking heals, with all of the mobility, with everything that I do have at my disposal. Do remember as well, guys, we have no great sword or sword and shield perks on any of my pieces of gear since we are going the PvP track rewards. This is going to make it very, very difficult to actually showcase some of the strengths when it comes to great sword and sword and shield, but at the same time, it's going to showcase how strong this would be if you had those perks after I beat up on whoever we play against. So that's the idea of what's about to happen. So here we can see the strength, like I said, 57. The only thing we're getting here is that 10% damage to melee physical basic attacks. And then dexterity wise, we're getting a couple of different things that are important. We're getting the 10% chance to critical hit, which isn't huge. 5% thrust damage. Again, not big for us. We have the dodges cost 10 less stamina. I really like that one. And then this is a big one as well. 10% bonus backstab and headshot damage. If you guys take a look at the sword, of the champion, it does have penetrating backstab. So if I can get behind somebody, I'm going to actually opt for the sword because it's going to give me 27% of that player's armor with the penetrating backstab. And then plus, like I said, with the dexterity being so high, I'm actually going to do a lot of damage when I am behind the player. So this is pretty much the setup we're going to be running. We also might switch in the spear for the heck of it randomly at the end of the video just to kind of see how well it does. But uh, like I said, this is a very, very basic build that anybody can get. We did get our Q, so we'll accept that. You can also see that we're just going elemental damage absorption on like three of four of our pieces. And that's just because it comes like that when you get it off the PvP track. So, all right, let's jump into this and uh, let's use our pots and our buffs right away. So, of course, Powerful Honing Stone, if you guys don't know, these are the things you should be popping every single time. Next up, we have the Consumable. It's going to be Attributes. We're going to do con to get to 250 con. And like I said, the main focus here is staying alive and just slowly dwindling them down. If you have a life staff on the other team, you can actually stun them up fairly well with Relentless Rush, Skyward Slash, 
Uh, you know, we have the Leaping Strike. We have so much Shield Bash, Shield Rush. All these things are going to help kill the healer, which makes it such a good healer killer as well. So we do like to use Desert Sunrise actually instead of the Powerful Incense. And I believe we have everything popped at this point. So let's take a look and see who we're playing against. Let's see if we know any of the names. Uh, I don't believe I know any of these names. So we'll see what happens. I don't, like I said, have any experience really playing this build. And I actually might press the wrong buttons a couple times because I just switched up my, my my abilities. That's something we'll show actually as well. Real quick, if you guys want to take a look, you'll have to pause the video. But this is a very, very bad sword and shield setup and a bad great sword setup. So don't copy anything too crazy here. We only have level 15 on the uh, the great sword. So 19 on the sword and shield. So it's not too, too bad. But it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out basically. Let's try to get a lunge in here. So they're all focusing me, which is actually fantastic. We're going to heal up here. We're going to actually do a skyward slash, do a little bit of damage there. At this point, my team's going to be able to do so much damage because they're focusing me. And this is actually, like I said, very, very good for the squad. There's one kill. There's two kills. And the last guy across the map over here. We're going to see how much we heal if he does attack me. Let's see. Can I get a... Sh I think I, I think I healed it. I don't know if I'm healing or not. I was trying to see if I could get the uh, the dodge for the shirking heals to see exactly how much we heal. That's just an outright win for us. And like I said, it's because they focused me and I have so much constitution. Because I'm running that 200 con, I am, or sorry, 250 con, that 60 second cooldown is not a big deal because I'm able to run out there, basically tank everything for a, a while with Oak Flesh Bomb and uh, that, like I said, 250 con perk. Uh, so it's going to really let my teammates do a lot of damage. All right, we're missing auto attacks. No problem, though. We're going to be a little bit of trouble. No problems, though. Like I said, we're going to heal up. We're going to run away and giving my teammates a lot of chances to do a lot of damage. We're going to go in here. We're going to get a skyward slash coming down. We're actually going to hit the steadfast. And at this point, he is pretty weak, but I'm also weak. We're going to try to reset just a little bit. Come in with the nice little leaping strike. Keep him in place for our teammate. Now we're going to come back in. We got that kill. We're going to shield bash, shield, yeah, shield rush, shield bash, whatever you want to call it. And there's another win. But like I said, this is not our role. With this build, we're focusing in on staying alive and making them focus me. And if they focus me, I still have so much CC I can put out. And uh, like I said, they're definitely focusing me. You've seen that. We are going medium build as well. And you can always go heavy if you wanted to. Let's go flesh bomb. Let's go in the side here. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just leaping strike straight through that totem. They are trying to ignore me here. This could be interesting if they actually do play it well. Doesn't look like it's going to be great for them, depending. We got a relentless rush there. It was pretty nice. We're going to actually pot up a little bit. And a leaping strike. He actually dodges out of it. A very nice dodge by him. We're missing a lot of abilities. Okay, we should be good. There it is. Like I said, it's just one of those forceful ways of playing the game. You actually continually rush at them and they can't focus you or they lose the game so they have to run away from you and the whole time they're worried about you getting you know backstabs and everything else on them so but I do want to showcase a couple other rounds that we had uh later in the day like I said we'll do one more but I won't make you watch all of the rounds but this is when we actually played whirling blade as well we switched it up to whirling blade so take a look at some of these rounds real quick look how strong this build is let me know what your guys's thoughts are on some episodes like this where we talk about specific builds how strong they are and then showcase it with pieces of gear that you guys can easily get um, but if you are interested in more videos like this make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on make sure to follow the twitch channel at twitch.tv slash iGraphicGuy. thank you guys so much for tuning in I'll see you guys all in the next one.